Hello there, it's Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID Symptom Study giving you this week's update. And the news is that we're getting around nine and a half thousand new cases every day being reported, which is now similar to the government confirmed cases on PCR. This is only a small reduction from last week, which means that the rate of decrease uh, has continues to slow down, as we predicted last week. And we have to realise that it, this is quite normal after these, these large peaks. This means that the R value, the reproduction number, which everyone talks about, is creeping uh, close to one. Now, as long as it doesn't go way above one, that's uh, still OK. Now, we are seeing differences across the regions with uh, more obvious flattening in places like Scotland and Wales and still decreases in London and the east of England and a sort of variety in between. This means that we have around 150,000 symptomatic cases across the country. That's called the prevalence, which means about one in uh, 400 people have uh, symptomatic COVID. Sounds a lot until you think, remember where we were in January, where you had a one in 20 chance of bumping into someone in London who had uh, active infection. So we're definitely in a much better place than we were. So let's try and put this uh, into context because some people will say, oh, this is terrible. Um, the rate is not going down. We're, we're going to be uh, in lockdown even longer. I don't think that's the case because the hospital admissions are dropping uh, nicely around 20% uh, week on week and the capacity of the NHS is looking much better than it was a month ago. The, the rates of occupancy with COVID are range between 8 and 19% across all the regions. The death rate has come down to by 31% and is around 400 cases a day, which sounds still worrying until you remember that unfortunately about 1,500 people die on most days uh, in February on an average year. So everything is relative. Now, the other news is that these rates are mainly being caused by the younger population who are probably mobile and still working. It's generally in the 20 to 50 year olds. And we've seen reassuringly a drop off in the uh, more elderly populations. Rates are low and actually going downwards, particularly in the over 80s, as you would expect, given that virtually all of them have uh, now been vaccinated. Now, this figure of 9,500 needs to be looked at also in historical context, because if we look back in time to the end of May last year, that's exactly what we were seeing when rates were coming down after that first wave that peaked around the beginning of April. The difference in the state we are now is we're a few months earlier. Uh, weather isn't yet quite as good. And we have a variant that is 30% more infectious than the one we had last year. But on the plus side, we as well, we have perhaps a quarter of the population that are, are immune in some way to the virus. And we've also had 25% who have been vaccinated. And we know from our app vaccine study that half a million of you have logged in with us that we're getting about a 70% reduction in uh, new cases in people who've been vaccinated uh, after three weeks, and that may get better. So I think we're in a much better place than some people are portraying, and that the slow level of lifting restrictions is, in my opinion, on the conservative side. And if we are going to be driven by data, let's, let's hope that this data continues to be good and we can move things forward a bit faster than planned. Now, 
a lot of people are worried about schools going back um, in Scotland and Wales uh, around now and on the 8th of March in England. This will inevitably cause some infections uh, because there's no such thing as perfectly safe conditions. This will lead to some extra cases, but probably just in this, this group of people between um, 18 and uh, 50 and shouldn't really affect hospital admissions or deaths in any way. And I think this should be manageable. I don't, I think given the overall trends, I'm not particularly worried about that. Now, if you are, do have children, please do log for them, because if you do and they develop any strange symptoms and children get very strange symptoms of COVID that aren't the classical ones at all, you can get them a test uh, the next day on the app. We also have uh, next week a webinar on vaccines and the latest update on all the data about uh, side effects and uh, potential comparison between the, the two types. So join us for that. In the meanwhile, thank you for logging. Thank you for support. And if you do get any symptoms, uh, whether you've just had a vaccine or not, always assume it could be COVID and do get a test through us. Thanks for your support. Stay safe.